No, oh, no, me, he knew Kia koto, he homa. No, my hooky, my key, Zach's place. Welcome again, friends, to Zach's place for our reflection on the gospel this week. Once again, we have a ripper from Jesus that cuts across so many practices and things which happen in the world around us every day. We have the story of the vineyard, vineyard workers or the generous landowner coming to us from Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16. It's well worth reading and you'll find the text right at the bottom of the associated words in this post. Jesus is describing to his disciples what the kingdom of God is like. It's like this landowner who needs his grapes picked. <coughs> he hires workers from the marketplace one day at the standard daily rate for them, one denarius for a day's work, and the workers are happy about that. Later in the day, he needs more workers. He goes back to the marketplace and encourages more people to come and join in his harvest. And then right at the end of the day, just before knockoff, he goes again and finds still more people standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He asks, why have you been here all day? And they reply, well, no one has hired us today. Obviously, these are the people in that community that no one wanted to employ for the obvious reasons. They were probably the lame. <coughs> they were probably slow addicted, battlers of some sort struggling to get by. The usual suspects we find in our housing estates and deprived neighbourhoods today who are often unable to access employment opportunities and contribute to our society in meaningful ways. After the mahi, after the work, the landowner just, it comes time to pay out his workers and he starts with those who came last, who did the least work, and he pays them a denarius, the same as the others agreed to work for. Now obviously the early birds who worked all day are upset. Why do they get as much as us when they haven't worked all day and borne the heat of the day? Most trade unions would be really upset about this sort of behaviour by our landowner as well because that undermines collective bargaining and workplace solidarity. Our landowner though defends his generosity and sends the grumblers away with their day's pay. And Jesus concludes the story with, so the first will be last, and the last will be first. This is a startling and challenging picture of how Jesus sees the kingdom of God actually working out in the real world. We often hear about the upside down kingdom, which lifts the poor and pulls down the proud and sends them away. And this has played out in today's story. Already this week in the gospel we have read of the rich, rich young ruler turning away from Jesus and the disciples heard again yesterday that the first will be last as well. So today's story is not an anomaly. It is not an exception in the thought processes of Jesus. It is a consistent and constant theme. So let's take heed of it and have a closer look. From social media, we can tell that many Christians shy away from the politics of the gospel. But this story is very political in its outworking. We actually have an election coming up soon in New Zealand. And thankfully, not too much about tax cuts for the wealthy has been thrown around yet. Maybe that's one good thing from COVID-19 being upon us. Today's story is a really good picture of what generalised anarchist political theory can look like where everyone in the community contributes what they can and receives what they need to live on. There's a beautiful book called Christianity written by Dave Andrews, an Aussie from Brisbane, a friend and contemporary of Smithies, which looks into that concept in depth, depth and is well worth a read. Now, no wonder the rich man turned away from Jesus when he realised what it was going to cost him to continue to follow further. And our workers who worked hard today, they're grumpy because they felt cheated by the less skilled or capable workers being paid the same as them. Yet all of us have the same needs for shelter, for food, for warmth and meaningful work to fill up our days. This meaningful work gives us dignity and standing because it allows us to give, to contribute and to be part of the community. There's been much research done about how to lift up the poor and it seems that giving handouts alone cold charity is nowhere near as effective at changing people's lives as giving people opportunity and 
uh, the ability to partake in what's going on. Handouts demean and put down and keep the giver in a position of power and control. So opportunity lifts up, provides skills and hope of self-determination and of being able to look after yourself and provide for others. This is real life giving. So our landowner is not only generous today, he is casting a vision again of what our society could be like if we chose to live in the ways of Jesus. So how can we be part of making this vision become reality in our world today? After all, we regularly pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. May we have the balls to be courageous and vote for this type of society. May those of us who employ people and who are in positions to share resources look for ways that we can <clears throat> make the last be first and the first last. This can be a very difficult thing for us to do if we're concerned about the company we keep and what they may think of us. It doesn't take much to look around and see that our communities are bulging now with people cast on the scrap heap of life, either by accident, addiction, or adverse conditions beyond their control. This story calls us to include them and look for ways to give them meaningful involvement and creative engagement in our community. Through this creative engagement, dignity and mana standing can be given to everybody especially those who often miss out on it. We don't need the snide remarks and put-downs from politicians and privileged people about those who are not able to contribute as much as they are. Jesus Christ, friend of outcasts and sinners, he is our Lord, and his way will always challenge our privilege by flipping it upside down and welcoming those others may not want to engage with. May we be known as those types of people in God's squad. So God give us grace to live in this way. Aranga Marie Kia Koto Cheers.